Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Mindplex podcast. Today, we are here with Senior Staff Attorney and Civil Liberties Director, David Green from the EFF. Hi, David. Hey, Lisa. Hi, everybody. And we are here to talk about the Telegram situation. And uh, David's here to tell us all about it. David, let us know, like, why was Pavel Durov arrested? What's going on? Yeah, so I should first say that we actually know very little about <laughs> about what has happened because okay. the French government has said very little. So there's been a lot of guessing going on. So I'm going to try and be really careful to Well, that's important if guess. we don't actually know a lot because <laughs> yeah. people have been saying a lot of different things. And that's yeah, what no, I'm there, trying really, to clear up. I, read, I keep on reading all these articles like, oh, maybe they found something, but they didn't. Everyone, I think, is there's there's a lot of tea leaves, but not a lot of consistent reading of those tea leaves. Um, okay. And so, but I can tell you what we do know, which is mostly based on press releases that have been issued by uh, the French government. But I think really importantly, they're just press releases. We don't have any you know, legal documents or anything like that, that I think we'd have a greater confidence in. And the other thing I should say is that I am not a French lawyer. I have no expertise at all in French law. I have a oh, the rudimentary EU quiz ability is next. to read French. <laughs> um, <laughs> I speak it okay, but not as a lawyer. Anyway, just to say that like all these documents are originally in French. Some of yeah. them have some English translations. Um, and I, we, I've spoken with some French lawyers you know, to try. And, but again, there's a lot of reasons for... But anyway, I'll do the best I can. Okay, so we know very little. What we do know is that... Um, Pa, that uh, Dorov was originally uh, arrested um, under uh, what's called an what, what's sort of what's in like an investigatory warrant in France. And in France, they're allowed to when they're doing a criminal investigation, they believe someone has information about the investigation. They're allowed to detain that person for um, forty-eight or ninety-six hours, depending on the chart, depending on what's being investigated. Uh, just so they can try and get information from that person. So that's what happened. He was arrested because they were doing some type of investigation. They thought Dorov had information. They ended up um, using the procedure to get a 96 hour detention. And then what happens at the end of that time is that they're forced to either formally, um, formally identify him as the subject of an investigation, uh, which then will allow them to uh, put limitations on him going forward, or they have to like you know, completely release him. And they did the former. Um, they uh, so he is currently um, currently the subject of a formal the formal subject of an investigation, and because of that, he his he can't leave the country. He's not like incarcerated at the moment, but he. He can't leave the country, and there's some other limitations on what he's on what he's doing. So that's where we're up we're up to so far. Um, and what I don't I don't think he's he hasn't been charged with a crime, but he is a subject of a formal investigation relating to certain times. And I think maybe the best maybe I've been told that indicted might be the best English word, um, but he hasn't actually been charged with a with a. So indicted is not the best word. Yeah, well, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always say charge. Well, a lot of the translations have said charge. And again, in my rudimentary French, I saw the phrase mise en, mise en examen, which I'm like, yeah. well, that's not charge. That's, you know, that's subject okay. of, of investigation. Okay, so, so anyway, that's really that's, thickening this is, here. This so the point is, we deal with in France, story. they have warrants just to question people. Yes. In an investigation. If they're just investigate, if they're just being investigated for a crime. Whereas as here, you, if you're not the subject of investigation, they have to uh, make something up to take you in. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just saying, <laughs> just saying it's well, harder yeah. to question people sometimes because they don't, we don't have a mechanism like this in the United States, correct? Right. Well, not, yeah. I mean, we, it's, you have the ability to bring someone in for questioning, but there, you can't detain them. Not, we don't have a warrant yeah. for you. But we don't have somebody. a situation where you can have sort of a long-term restrictions on somebody because they're formally being formally being invested. That's not, it's not a procedure we have in the U S. Okay. So that's part of the confusion to begin with is that people are thinking, you know, and they didn't come pick him up. They got him when he landed at the airport. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. A little private airport, I guess too. Yeah. <laughs> so they knew he was coming They 
they were waiting for him. Yeah, you know, and some people, I, I, I uh, the people I've talked to in France have said that the idea that that he was under investigation and wanted they wanted to bring him in was semi public in July, and he probably should have known it, and he it's he shouldn't have been surprised that he was actually arrested when he landed. Um, in France, but again, it's hard to know what what he knew, or if he thought he was invincible, or you know, who, or whatever. Who knows? So, okay, so. so we'll never we never know what really yeah what really happens there until like again, there's actual information given. Okay, um, so is this the is this EU related? This these crimes is this about EU violations? It's a good question. It again, we don't know because we don't know what the actual charges. We, we, I mean, we have subject matters, and none of these seem to be related to violations of EU law. They seem to be related to particularities of French law, um, and I think some of the European EU commissioners have said that there's nothing in the, for example, the Digital Services Act that would compel you know, that that compels any of the things France uh, is looking into. But again, we know so little about it um, that it's hard to tell. The Digital Services Act? Yeah, the Digital Services Act is the main regulator. It, it's a huge, enormous regulation uh, in, that's in effect in the EU um, okay. that puts certain requirements um, to mitigate risk on uh on online platforms, they vary by size. I'm not even quite sure which size, if Telegram has enough user to be in sort of the biggest category, which has the most requirements or not. Okay. But anyway, I think the commissioners have said they don't think this is about the DSA. So all I these articles do know, that are uh, listing, you know, terrorism, lack of content moderation, this, that, yeah. they're just making stuff up at this point. Well, so what we know, what the, what they what they've said is that there was what they are invest what the subjects of the investigation would be um, uh, a refusal to comply with a request for information um, and that information uh, or or um, or to provide documentation or information um, in response that that the government believes is necessary to implement um, a legally authorized interception. So the government was trying to intercept communications. It's unclear whether that meant live interception, like a wiretap, or whether they're trying to get records. It's if we, all we know, that's, we don't know any of the detail, um, and that a telegram uh, refused to comply with that request. So refused to give them the information. Um, so what that could mean can range from a, like a, the worst case scenario, right, is that the government wanted to wiretap and listen in live or you know, read live on you know, the small subset of telegram communications that might be end to end encrypted. Like that would be the worst case scenario. Um, the better one could be that, you know, it was one of the, you know, they were interested in the communication that was one of the much lesser protected things and maybe the ones that are sort of that aren't end, end encrypted, but have some encryption in them. Um, but we don't, we don't know. Or they could actually just needed help, like looking at the completely public stuff. <laughs> so okay, you know, so it, let's talk about that for a minute. It, ra it ranges. The possibilities range from the completely benign uh, to you know, to right. like something that'd be really concerning, and we really have no idea where it falls on that scale. We do know they did tell us the the criminal offenses they're investigating. So we know those are. Um, uh, child sexual assault material, um, uh, drug trafficking, organized fraud, um, and money laundering. <laughs> so that's oh. the, that's what they think might be happening on that. Those are the crimes that are the underlying crimes they're investigating. Okay. And the issue again is though, so if it was an encrypted group chat, it would like signal or WhatsApp it would be encrypted and only the people in the group would be able to see what is in it. But drum roll, please. Tele <laughs> Telegram group chats are not encrypted, right? They're, they're, they're not end to end encrypted, right? I, I don't know if they have some layer of encryption on them, uh, but they are, they are, you know, uh, or maybe it's private chats have some layer, but unless you're in Again, private mode, 
Um, you have to have you unless you turn on the secret chat feature yeah. between two people. It only works. Doesn't work for groups. Right. No, I've been looking this up. Your own Eva Alpern. So yeah. Eva Alpern brings this up in 2022 when she does her harm reduction guide for the Ukraine and Russia because people involved in that conflict were using Telegram, thinking that it was encrypted and secure. Yeah. Uh, by and by default, which a secure messaging app should be by default if it wants to call itself a secure messaging app like again like signal and whatsapp um and so uh i'm a little if, if this comes into things whether or not here in the states it might be protected speech if it's in an encrypted private chat group as opposed to a public channel right. or a public group could you explain the difference why it's because on telegram there's either public channels or there's private channels where it's really easy to fake an invite to like there's yeah. videos on youtube you just switch out the name in an invite from another group and you can join any group yeah and i think what a lot of people don't understand about telegram is that you know a lot of people especially in the us think of telegram as a messaging service but it, it's more most commonly used around the world as like a social media platform so there's groups and people can publish stuff and you can you know there's feeds and things, you know, all the stuff you look at for social media um, and a, a ton of communications obviously happens there and the groups are very very active similar to they you know have on you know on other things that start as messaging apps that then have groups that then publish stuff broadly. Yeah. And uh, so that stuff is mostly, mostly completely public, right? There's, there's no control over that at all. Um, then when you have one-to-one -one communications, um, each person, if you want to be end-to-end -end encrypted, so you don't, you don't want Telegram to have the content of the communication. You know, that's what you need for end-to-end -end encryption. Um, both people have to turn on the private function. If only one person turns it on, then it might be protected in one direction, uh, but not the other one. And, and so the, and this is important because the French government could just be asking Telegram for the unencrypted communications that it has because the communication wasn't end-to-end -end encrypted, right? It was only other one end or it had some level of encryption in transit, but not otherwise. So it could be they're just saying, we know you have this, give it to us. Right, that's one possibility. Um, or again, if it was an end-to-end -end encrypted communication, that's a completely different. Telegram wouldn't have that. Wouldn't have the con wouldn't have the conversation. Right, which is the point of the end-to-end -end encryption is that the platform itself, even you know, can't can't look if it if it wants because it's it's actually encrypted. Um, so yeah, just to be clear on this point about no encryption, Moxie Marlin Spike says telegram messages aren't end-to-end -end encrypted and he also brings up that it's a cloud messenger meaning that all messages live on telegram servers rather than the user device could you explain the significance of that so again this all goes back to does telegram have information that they're in their possession that they could give to the french government that they i mean that they they have the capability of giving to the french government so so if the information is stored on their servers then they have it right they, they have something they could provide to the french to the french government the most secure communications in fact really the only secure communications the information is not the information may pass through servers but is not stored or retained there at all so so when you know, something like signal or something as a reliably end-to-end -end encrypted you know system um it can you know the it, it can exist on your device you know, the records of the communication will exist on your device, but they only pass through other things and there's no retention at all. And so if that's, that again, is creates the possibility that Telegram might have information, like might actually possess the information that the French government wants. And, that, and so that's why maybe this request for information pertains to that. Um, you know, if they, yeah. if they made a similar request to like Signal, you know, then Signal say, we don't have anything. Could this sound like something when the the feds, in this case, the French government, are trying to in, get information about users, Telegram users, and Telegram is just stalling, you know, not giving it to them. Like when, like when our government gives Google warrants, 
when it's fishing, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So we know there was an authorized interception. So we know that which under French law, I've been told is not, it's not something that requires like a court, a court approval. So it's, it's what a does that agency. really mean? An authorized interception. So they listen, they got some data, telegram data from somewhere. As or or they, you know, they, they, they had, they got, they have a government order saying to get it. Um, and that telegram as, did as telegram part of an investigation. Them. Yeah, didn't help them get it right, and so we, so okay. we know we know that, um, and so, but we don't know what that means, right? We don't know what that is, and so it, it but it seems I think what we, I, I think it's pretty safe to assume that the French government is seeking information about either the actual contents of communications from Telegram users or information about those users, with their identities or or something. So it seems like that's what this authorized um, interception would be about. The word interception, um, as you know, from and again, we're translating um, from the French, but it's um, it's the same word. It's you know, interception in English and interception in in, in French. And wire that tapping. Does, that does basically. seem to be like close to a wiretap. But again, there's lots of ways that governments can intercept, and we don't know if it's a real time interception. Um, we're, we're trying to get in transit communications as the people are communicating or okay. if it's something looking for historical records. Okay. So the moral of the story is if Telegram allowed you to do truly end-to-end -end encrypted group chats, then we don't have to worry when the government's asking for this and that because Telegram wouldn't have the ability to hand the data over. Yes. If... So, I mean, you know, the worst case scenario, uh, right. So it, 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 yes, if, if Telegram did not possess the data, possess the data, cause it only it uses its own, stores on its own servers. Um, then we'd be looking at a situation where what the, the, the government would be like, similar to like the Apple versus FBI situation in the U S right. where, where what the government tried to do was say, okay, we know you don't have the data, but why don't you just break all the security on your phone. Yeah. So give us a key. They do it about uh, every four yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, give I us mean, a back door. Help. Yeah. Help your country. I mean, again, that's, that's a possibility here, but it does seem, I think as Moxie said that like, it, it doesn't seem like that would be necessary here because it's more likely that if, you know, if they're that it's all public anyway, get, yeah, get the, get the <laughs> stuff they possess instead of having to sort of break the But again, You know, and again, there's, if it is, if they are trying to do something where it said we need your help in decrypting information, whether mm -hmm. that's the key or a back door or a man in the middle or something like that, like that would be highly, highly concerning. Um, that's yes. a possibility. It's what but, you don't want. Yeah, I mean, and that's a possibility, but there's also a lot of other things, so it's hard yeah. to know how panicked we should be about this. All right. So, but if you, but if you're trying to have um, encrypted group chats, you're not going to be doing it on Telegram. You not do it on Telegram. And in fact, your private channels, it's very easy for anybody to join them. So, um, so that's, that's good to know. Cause I didn't know that coming into this. I, I was, uh, you know, was very confused about that. So thank you so much, David. I know you're very busy. I appreciate you coming on and clearing everything up for us. And we'll probably see you soon, maybe in a couple of weeks, and uh, do a little update as things develop on this. Yeah, hopefully we'll know more. All right. Thanks a lot, David. <laughs> thanks, Lisa. Bye. Bye.